Hello and welcome back to the Alice Back Podcast. I'm your host, Jordan, and I am wearing a Tesla hat, which means today does involve some Tesla news. Hot off the press, Tesla has a holiday update as they typically do. Um, and so I'm going to get into all the details of what is coming in the 2024 Tesla holiday update, hopefully coming as soon as next week. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. So Tesla just announced via the social media platform X, aka Twitter, that uh, the holiday update is coming very soon. Uh, they said as early as next week, which as I'm recording this would indicate probably December 8th thereafter, somewhere around there, basically mid-December, which makes sense right before the updates. And as usual, the holiday update is not exclusively just Christmassy things. And then come January, you're like, okay, what was that? Um, it's still cool, but <laughs> I do want to point out the holiday update last year brought the Apple Music app, I think, which is awesome. And I am a huge fan of that. And uh, I pretty much use that every day in my Tesla. So uh, I'm very curious to jump into what is included this year. There were some leaks coming out um, and some things that people kind of assumed were happening. So I think Tesla was just getting ahead of the leaks. Um, and instead of just dropping the update immediately, they went ahead and announced it ahead of time and they'll be rolling it out later, which I think is fine. It builds up some hype, some anticipation, which people tend to have this time of year anyways. Um, so I will jump into their Tesla Twitter article, X article, whatever. I still call it Twitter. Um, and I will get into all the little details. It is 2024.44.25. That I think is the update number that will be rolling out. Um, and I guess we'll see if everything comes all at once. I'm assuming it will, but sometimes they do roll things out and then have a you know coming soon section. So first up, the banner on the Tesla x article is just a cyber truck with a christmas tree in the bed all lit up actually looks really cool i i kind of like that a lot um but first thing probably the biggest thing is the apple watch app you can use your apple watch as a phone key now so i guess watch key is that a new term we're going to be start coming out with um a wearable key i guess yeah we, we have a phone key for a while that's a huge thing that honestly separates tesla from some of the competition not exclusively obviously you can use your phone as a key and many other cars as well but Tesla seems to be genuinely the best. Um, so I'm really excited to try this out and test it out. Um, I do have an Apple Watch, although I am concerned for my Android brethren. Um, this is not coming to any sort of Android watches, Galaxy Watch, um, Google Pixel Watch, whatever else there is out there that I know of yet, but it may come out eventually. But they're starting with Apple, so you can apparently use the, let's see, you can view the battery, state of charge, um, I'm guessing you can tap that to toggle between miles remaining and percentage. Um, then there's the upper right has a lock unlock button. Lower right has a climate control. Um, bottom left has a frunk release. And upper left has a hamburger menu. So in theory, a few more options in there. Um, I'm curious to see if these buttons will be able to be adjustable. Like, can you pick and choose whichever quote unquote complications you can have on either corner of the screen? Um, in the middle there, it's showing a red Model S, but it seems to be that you might be able to switch between cars because on the right side of the screen of the Apple Watch, you'll see a highlighted dot and then a non-highlighted dot, which indicates you could probably swipe up and see a different car. Those dots are also located next to the digital crown on the Apple Watch, which makes me think you can actually use a digital crown to swipe between your vehicles. Maybe. We'll see. Lots to um, test with that. And I should preface this. I should have said this in the beginning, but I am actually planning to do an entire reviews, out of spec reviews video on the holiday update once it comes to my Model 3. That will be a lot of fun, showing you everything hands-on, how it all works. Um, the next thing up is the dash cam and sentry mode clips being able to be saved to your phone which is super cool. Um, we already see lots of videos on the internet of people uploading crazy footage, things they've seen while driving their Tesla, whether it's car accidents um, or just something funny. 
an animal sighting, a close call. Uh, you know, you see a lot of things of like, oh, FSD saved me from this situation. Um, those are not the hardest thing to get off, but typically I think people have had to like take out the USB of their Tesla, which is where the dash cam data is stored, and then put that on your computer. That's how we got the footage from my crash when I um, had somewhat of an incident in Kyle's Tesla Model S Plaid. Um, but now you can actually view it directly from the Tesla app and save them to your phone, which I love. Um, this makes it so much more accessible. I think we'll probably start seeing more clips um, shared around the internet because now it'll be so much more easily done. Xbox did this as well. That's just another thing that came to mind. You know, I, I play Fortnite, whether I should be proud of that or not, I don't know. But uh, this is sharing funny clips, uh, you can just jump on your phone or your Xbox app on your phone, share clips that way. That's what this reminds me of. Um, this is a very, very requested feature for a long time, and it makes sense. I think I'm, I'm really excited to see the, see how well this is used, how many people actually use it. Is it going to be a cool thing at first, and then people are going to revert to their old ways, which is either not saving them or just pulling them off the drive? Like, will this be fast? Will it take forever? How's the data upload, uplink speed? There's a lot of considerations and facts we'll have to test which I said, you know, of course, I'll be testing once the update rolls out to my car. Notably, this is not completely different from like the previewing of sentry mode on your phone that you can do. Um, but this is just, you know, ideally you'll be able to jump to an event. That's what the screenshot that they're showing is. Um, there's like a jump to event button. So maybe like something when something's detected, like a sentry mode event, well, it sounds like you can also just swipe through the timeline and pick your own timing of when you want something and it shows um you know time of day as you're swiping around on the timeline so that'll be nice and pretty easy hopefully to find exactly what you're looking for we also have auto shift between drive and reverse on the stockless aka highland model 3. that's the one i have really excited to test this out um basically they said auto shift on stockless model 3 can now automatically shift between drive and reverse to handle parking lot maneuvers and multi-point turns Notably, this was already on the Tesla Model S and X 2021 and newer, the first stockless Teslas, controversially speaking. And um, that's, I guess, not on Cybertruck yet, but we don't know if they're going to bring it to the other older vehicles, you know, with older hardware, with the stocks. Elon did say auto shift would apply to all vehicles eventually, but we do know not everything he says does come to fruition. So we'll find out, of course. But for this update, Coming to Model 3, I'm excited to try that out. I have been using Summon a bit, trying Auto Park, all the things, trying to really dive into this new Tesla that I got, and we'll see, the, yeah, we'll see how well it works. Some things have been better than others, but in general, overall, pretty impressed. Jumping into Sirius XM is the next piece. This is now available for Model 3, Model Y, and Cybertruck. It was previously available for Model S and Model X, but that is because they had actual Sirius SM, sorry, Sirius XM um, antennas. Like it's like a different type of connection. It, there's like their own satellites, I think. Um, my personal car, my Mazda also had a Sirius XM, well it has, but I've literally never used it. Um, I personally don't think it's great. Sirius XM does not have the highest quality audio. I'm just not the biggest fan, but there are a lot of people who are big fans of Sirius XM. Let me know in the comments if you are one of them and why you like Sirius XM. I'm not here to argue. I'm just here to, I'm curi genuinely curious um, what you see in it. Um, and maybe you just love how it's used, how, how the stations are laid out. Um, so Model 3, Model Y, and Cybertruck now have it via internet connection. So this will not work in the middle of nowhere like Sirius XM would on the cars that have dedicated Sirius XM how many times are we going to say that? <laughs> dedicated hardware, um, like a dedicated antenna satellite for Sirius XM. This is data-based. So if you, in theory, don't have premium data connectivity, I don't know if you'll get this, and but maybe they will. I don't know. That's going to be interesting, the whole premium connectivity. Uh, I'll be testing this out as well, of course. And I might even be getting this update during my trial of non-premium connectivity. I'm going to try both on my car and uh, compare and contrast. But uh, we'll see if uh, anyone really cares about this. They have this pretty high up on their list of things, um, but I'm, yeah, wondering how many people are really genuinely excited about that. The next thing uh, that is very, very exciting to me as a road tripper enthusiast is setting the arrival energy at a destination, aka setting what your state of charge should be 
when you get somewhere. A uh, very interesting graph here because they they do it in like it seems to be sections of 10 from 5 to 95%. So you can't say 50%. You can say 45 or 55. You can't say 0 or 1 or 2, which I would prefer to do. I do know this car has a fairly sizable buffer below 0. So I would be okay arriving to some destinations with 1 or 2%, knowing that there is charging, of course. Um, but, you know, with speed, I guess you can make up for some of that. So I'd probably set mine on 5 and roll with it. But the benefit of this is what if you're going to a destination, aka visiting family for the holidays, and you know they have no charging, and maybe their closest charger is 60 miles away. Um, this would let you set a you know 35% state of charge on arrival, um, and then you have the flexibility to get somewhere else. It does all the road trip calculations to optimize for that, so you're not trying to like guess and like charge up a bunch on your last charger more than it says it's it's really cool i i can't believe it took them this long to actually add this but i am excited to see it glad to have it um, we'll see if they bring any more settings like different state of charge on arrival for chargers versus um, your final destination i think that is a difference that i do value that some other cars offer so we'll see there will also be changes to the iOS app uh, that we know are coming, and so maybe we can get better route planning in the iOS app. Because a lot of times I'm not even in my car, but I'm thinking about my route, what kind of stops I want, and it's just really limited in the actual Tesla app. So excited to see uh, some updates to that as well. We also have searching along the route with estimated detour times. So when navigating, search results are now filtered to show options along your route and how much time it would add by adding that stop. I love this. I've been manually doing this for so long in so many cars. Um, so the fact that Tesla is finally rolling it out is pretty exciting. It is funny, the screenshots they show here are just showing 100% state of charge. I just noticed that. Um, that's really funny, I don't know why that's that. And they even have temperature set at 70 and not 69. Like, I thought Elon was running this company. Anyways, I completely digress. Um, but yeah, this is, Fantastic. There's a lot of times where I'm driving and like, oh, I want to maybe add a car wash stop, maybe add a coffee shop, stop, a restaurant. And instead of manually, I, it is frustrating. They have great navigation and it's easy to find things and add things. Like I think the route planner is pretty good, but it can always use work. So I'm glad they are still working on it. Um, we, I know a lot of people are wanting like 3D buildings and you know improved maps like what Google Maps and Apple Maps have been using, um, but I guess this is what we get for this. But that is not where the maps updates improvements end. We also have precipitation map and weather at the destination, which is also nice um, to actually see like the weather, but also see that your car is seeing the weather. So you're thinking maybe it really is taking the weather into account. So the screenshot they share shows the weather radar, just like you would see on like a weather app and even a timeline that you can see when the weather is happening in what places at what times. There's a weather toggle on the right side of the screen, so you can looks like you can turn this off and on. Um, and then, yeah, I'm curious to see what the weather at your destination looks like. They didn't provide a screenshot of that, but I'm curious to see how that implementation looks. Then we have rear cross traffic alert. Tesla, welcome to 19... Well, I don't know when this was actually introduced, but <laughs> many other cars have had this for a long time. Um, so I'm very happy to see it here as well. When you're in reverse, your vehicle will alert you if it detects a pedestrian or vehicle crossing behind you. You'll have an audible warning if a cross traffic object is detected. Um, curious to see what that audible warning is. Maybe it'll be similar to you know, when you turn your turn signal on and there's someone in the lane you're trying to turn into. It is the same glowing thing on the side of the camera where that um, intrusion is. I don't know if that's the right word, but and this is probably going to be the same type of thing just for rear cross traffic alert, which is honestly quite nice in a parking lot situation. So this is not using um, sensors like many other cars do, of course. This is using the vision only system. So it is um, using relying on the camera and of course i i notably disagree with tesla ditching the sensors i think redundancy is a safety benefit and just great overall but hey cameras are working pretty well for them so far um it is funny though because musk elon actually said they would add this feature back in 2020 so it just it took a while but are we surprised 
Then we have Cybertruck custom wraps and license plate customization. So on your little avatar vehicle in the in your car on the screen, you, you know you can change the color. You've been able to do that for a while now. But you can now do a completely cool custom wrap. It's like they picked up on the fact that everyone is wrapping their Cybertrucks, which is hilarious. So you can now do this with your Cybertruck. I I'm wondering if will this come to other vehicles as well? Because I mean, if you drive around LA any given day, you'll see hundreds of Teslas and a substantial amount of them, even non Cybertrucks are wrapped. So a lot of people clearly have wraps they love dearly on their Model 3, S, Y, whatever. Um, so I'd love to see this come to everything. Like, I guess they made it work with Cybertruck. Just just bring it to the rest of them. Although Cybertruck may be easier because it's more planar in its shape. Um, so you can use many preloaded designs or upload custom ones using a USB flash drive. And there is a template and instructions that will be published on GitHub. So we'll probably try that on our Cybertruck as well because, um, yeah, why not? There's so many people with wrap cyber trucks. Can't wait to see, you know, people are going to start uploading photos of their custom wrap, which is so funny because they've already shown us photos of the real one. So I guess uh, bring the fake one to side by side. Then there's Cybertruck rear camera improvements, still in the Cybertruck train. Um, the camera feed is now larger and you can pinch to zoom in or out. Very curious to see how this looks and operates. They did not include a screenshot on their um, talk of this, which is a little strange um so maybe they're still working on it that's totally a theory and i don't love the cybertruck rear view mirror i wish they just had a digital rear view mirror up top i don't like that it takes up part of the screen but at least it's a huge screen so maybe they're making it a bit more flexible i'm here for that um other smaller things tune in radio is better um and still completely free with no setup needed so that's cool they don't really mention what's better. It just is better. So, um, but it, it's a cool feature. Like it's a it's a station. This well, a conglomerate of stations allows you to listen to radio stations from around the world, um, which I think is really cool. And I can't believe I haven't really used it much. So I might try to use it more just because I'm really curious. But that's pretty fun. Um, then you get rear arcade in the Cybertruck. Cybertruck Santa mode is another huge thing. I, I guess I don't know how many people use it after Christmas, but having the ho ho ho, which you can probably use the, you know, the voice assistant in the Tesla to trigger it just like you can the other cars, turns your Cybertruck avatar into kind of a cyber sleigh. They didn't call it cyber sleigh; they just said Santa sleigh. But it's Santa sleigh with a light bar from the Cybertruck and a very very raked windshield, and one of Tesla's robots in the um, driver's seat. And it kind of looks like the reindeer are also robotic, which is really funny. So um, I can't wait to try this. It's hilarious. It just looks so funny on the screen. Um, there's also light show stuff. So that's very typical holiday updates. Always, you know, you start seeing videos of people showing off their light shows. Very fun. I think that's, I, I'm so here for the Easter eggs. I'm curious if you guys think these are dumb or cool. Um, of course, most Tesla people probably think they're cool. A lot of non-Tesla people think they're dumb, so maybe that's a bit divided. But you can remotely schedule the light shows from the Tesla app, including two new light shows in the 2024 holiday update. Awesome. Then there's Boomerang Foo. I have never played this. I have never even heard of it, but the Reddit community seems to be pretty excited. A lot of people uh, love this game, I guess. It's available on other major platforms, and it has huge reviews and even local multiplayer play. Curious to see if this is awesome. I'm definitely going to try it. Maybe it's maybe I'll get addicted. I don't know. <laughs> You'll find me just sitting in my car in my garage um, playing Boomerang Foo. Um, notably, I'm, I'm wondering if this will be limited to the MCU 3 with AMD Ryzen's chip but we'll have to find out. They have not confirmed hardware requirements to run Boomerang Foo, but it seems like a pretty intense game, um, at least technologically speaking. Then, of course, um, Whoopi Cushion continues. We have Fart on Contact, so you can just, as you sit, that's something that can happen. Okay, funny. Uh, adjust passenger seat from controls. I actually do love this. Um, sometimes a I'll have a passenger in my car that's really short and they have the seat super far forward and they get out and then my OCD is bothering me because the seat's so far forward and I don't want to lean over. You can now adjust it from the screen. I wonder if they'll bring memory 
Is there memory? I don't think there's memory settings for passenger seat, but that would be cool. Like if you had like, let's say a, a, a partner and a kid who frequently both ride in the front seat and if, it'd be so cool if they could both save their settings. Minor, but hey, this is a software defined car. They could easily add that. I don't know how easily, but they, they could totally add that. Then we'll have maintenance summary. You can track maintenance items from your vehicle's touchscreen. Other updates, um, rear screen remote now allows video playback controls in drive. Um, okay, that's cool. Nearby parking at your destination or point of interest. That could be really helpful in downtown, you know, busy city situations. When reversing, music volume can lower to reduce distractions. That's actually going to be used heavily, I think. A lot of people turn the music down anyways when they get to the destination or start reversing, I guess. Um, navigation will dynamically route around road closures. I'm actually looking forward to testing this as well. Sentry mode, uh, mobile app notification if door handle is pulled. So I guess not just getting a sentry mode event, but like letting you know if someone actually tries to get into your car by using the door handle. That's cool that they can actually you know, of course, detect that, but then let you know. Energy app consumption page for Model S, X, and Cybertruck. That's huge for the nerds. I'm here for it. And then vehicles without premium connectivity can now see traffic on their navigation route. This is a minor update, but I actually think it's pretty significant. Will people start using premium connectivity less? Like, will this make it less of a sought after feature? Um, Cause I think you can already do some Spotify stuff. Of course, Tesla uses a, well, in many cars uses a, a higher quality Bluetooth codec, so you can still get high quality sound, um, although not every car does. So I want to do a deep dive on that someday. But um, I, yeah, I'm curious. I'm going to be testing, you know, I have the, the free trial of premium connectivity and full self-driving. I'm going to let those expire and then explore just how much I miss them and then do a video on that over on Out of Spec Reviews. Um, so We'll see if this makes a big difference with navigation, um, but I'm here for it, absolutely here for it. Um, and then when navigating to a supercharger on arrival, you'll be notified on the touchscreen of any stalls that are out of service. Awesome, so cool. Um, you can already sometimes tell because people leave the handles down, um, like on the ground and stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know if this will be super accurate, but judging by you know, it can't be worse than EA's implementation. Um, it's so frustrating to pull up to Let's Try America stalls and find out that the app was incorrect about which ones were functioning, etc. Um, yeah, so uh, the comments I always like to dig into a little bit. You know, our friend Brandon Flash is wondering if this will be bundled with FSD 13.2. That is notably coming very soon. Uh, already maybe starting to roll out to some early um, lucky people. I'm really excited to try that, of course. And um, we'll see if I can. I, I might have to like do one day without full self-driving and then download it again to keep testing because that's always the plan. But it seems like people in the comments are really excited. This is a sizable, sizable holiday update. Um, we've had underwhelming ones in the past, even so underwhelming as to where Elon was like, oh, wait, yeah, wait, we'll add more things. This one is jam-packed full of features. So guys, uh, this is a long show already, but there's a lot to unpack. So let me know what you think of the holiday update, any notable things you're most excited about, anything you think is dumb, or anything you think is completely omitted that you were expecting to see. Um, I will be testing all of it as soon as it rolls out to my car, and you can expect hopefully a fun video over on Out of Spec Reviews. And until then, I guess I'll see you all next time and uh, enjoy your holiday season. Shopping is ramping up and I'm curious if chargers are superchargers in your area full this time of year. I heard some stories of that on Thanksgiving travel weekend. And of course, we'll see what Christmas and New Year's looks like. I'll be doing a road trip in my Model 3 on, for New Year's. So I'll, of course, report on that traffic situation and film that as well. Any hoodles. Thank you all for watching or listening. We'll see you next time.